Hello, everybody, and welcome back again. My name is Keith Gebhardt, and in this lecture, we are going to go ahead and discuss the introduction to our network architecture models. To understand data encapsulation, you need to be familiar with some important networking basics which directly relate to the topic. Network architecture models are stacked layers which provide the devices on our networks with a blueprint or a set of instructions for communicating our data across the network successfully. Now, the term architecture model is a loose term where you may see it written or spoken about in other ways such as network models, network architectures, OSI model, TCP IP model, etc., etc. All these terms are a correct way for discussing this topic. Each layer of the network architecture models have a specific purpose and job to perform to make the transmission of our data across networks possible. Not only do each of the layers have a job to perform, they also use specific protocols and standards associated to each individual layer. One layer will be used for application protocols and standards, another layer for determining the connection type and what port they will use, and another layer will determine the logical addressing and physical addressing information we require to send this information across our networks. We don't concern ourselves with needing to know the computer science behind these architecture models. These models, again, are just a set of instructions for our computers to follow so we can communicate different devices together across our networks. The models are just standards that exist, and because of that, we only need to familiarize ourselves with these standards to understand them so we know how to interpret the information being communicated across our networks. To understand the transmission of our data across our networks and understand the data encapsulation, we learn each layer of the architecture models so we know what protocols and standards are being used at what stage of the different communication processes. We have two types of network architecture models. The current version, which is what we use today, is the TCP IP model. And then we have the older model called the OSI model. Now, although the TCP IP model is the one we use today, we still need to know about the OSI model and all its layers, not only for those of you seeking your Cisco certification exams, but for out in the real world, in the real industry as well. The OSI model is an easier model to understand, and for that reason, we still use it to discuss different aspects of our networks in the industry today. We always refer to the OSI model as a reference. When we discuss our architecture models and data encapsulation, we typically talk about them from the top layer moving down because each layer on the model requires a service from another layer above it. For these layers to interact together to perform their job, they use two different methods. The first method is the same layer interaction, which is when two computers use the same protocol to communicate with the same layer of the architecture model on another computer. For example, our layer 4 here will use the TCP or UDP protocols to establish a connection to another network device. Using the same layer interaction with TCP, especially when it requires a three-way handshake, it's going to establish a same layer connection to the same layer on this PC over here from this PC over here. These two layers were going to be communicating back and forth each other, communicating different information that each one of these protocols requires for this connection to be established. The second type of interaction is an adjacent layer interaction where it's only dealing with a single computer. And one layer will provide a service to the higher layer. That higher layer requests that the next lower layer performs a needed function. So let's go ahead and take a look at this again. Let's go ahead and pretend we are using our TCP transport layer protocol. And he needs something from what? The layer above it. And then that layer above it requests that the next lower layer perform a needed function. So they need each other, essentially, right? Well, let's just pretend we are up here. This is our user, OK? And in the industry, we kind of joke around that this might be a layer 8 device, OK? It's not formally known, but it's a joke. You might hear it. So we're typing in here. I don't know. Maybe we're going to google.com. Okay. As soon as he types that in his web browser, it's going to establish a HTTP connection because that is our application layer protocol. Well, we know our HTTP protocol requires the use of TCP and then it'll use the TCP to establish a connection to the next device on our network, okay? So that is very important to understand how same layer and adjacent layer interaction works. Now there's more going on behind the scenes here, and we will take a look at that when we move further on in this course and start introducing the data encapsulation process. So we got to see what network models were, and we were able to see how each of their layers are an important process to the communication of our data going across networks. Now, if you have any questions, please use this time to ask your questions or leave your comments. Also, please check out Learn Tech Training on YouTube for free lectures, labs, and promotional offers for future courses we may offer. I will see you guys in the next lecture.